वेलकम टू थर्ड सेशन ऑफ कर्टन राइजर एट नाट्य दर्पण ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू माय नेम इज अशोक चौधरी प्रेसिडेंट एंड फाउंडर ऑफ इंडियन हेरिटेज एंड कल्चरल एसोसिएशन ऑफ न्यू जर्सी अ नॉन प्रॉफिट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एस्टैब्लिश इन टू थाउजेंड थर्टीन टू प्रमोट लोकल टैलेंट इन परफॉर्मिंग आर्ट्स सिंस टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन वी हैव इन ऑर्गेनाइजिंग मल्टीलिंग शॉर्ट प्ले फेस्टिवल नाट्य दर्पण टू ब्रिंग the local talent and to bring the communities together we typically invite 5 to 6 short play theater groups across the country and they perform in new jersey in their short plays in various languages such as marathi hindi english gujarati bengali kannada we are very happy this year our 6th annual natya darpan natya darpan 2022 we are hosting on october 15 in edison new jersey where we have selected six very intense very interesting short plays in marathi hindi english in order to know little bit more about these plays we in this session we invite uh, directors of these plays today we are very fortunate to have dr farley richmond professor and director of study center for asian studies university of georgia who is directing english play gruesome playground injuries written by rajiv jose at natya darpan welcome dr farley richmond thank you thank you nice to be here today i would like to introduce today's host dr manoj shahane dr shahane physician by profession but wears many hat in performing arts he is a actor director play writer perform many many places including india and usa so without further ado welcome dr shahane stage is yours thank you so much ashok ji um i would like to first of all thank mana tv international and their team ashok ji from natya darpan 2022 and i would like to welcome of the curtain riser for natya darpan 2022 how are you dr farley fine thank you how are you i'm doing well i'm doing well Good. so so without further ado i would really like to kind of let our audience know how uh, amazing body of work that you have done for indian diaspora in the united states over the last decades so oh. for people who do not know dr farley Uh, I am not going to be able to tell you all about Dr. Farley in this quick small session uh, because there are too many accomplishments to talk about. So what we're going to do today is we're going to kind of briefly approach few of them, and I'm going to kind of make it very interesting for the audience uh, who don't know Dr. Farley. Is first and foremost, Dr. Farley, if you can tell our audience. where did your love for the asian art start is was it when you were younger was it when you were already in college or can you please tell us about that briefly yeah. well i actually was a phd candidate at uh, michigan state university in the 1960s and so at that time my uh, major professor was uh, james r brandon Dr. Brandon was a specialist in uh Japanese theater and Southeast Asian theater. And he uh had written uh two books on the subject and so I was intrigued with the whole idea. I had never been abroad. Uh I had no idea that I would focus on I and I chose to focus on the English language theater in India. that was my first topic and so uh it so happened i was very lucky to get a fulbright grant and to take a uh ship leaving uh new york harbor to go to bombay wow and so i uh, went across the atlantic and across the mediterranean and the red sea and uh, ultimately came to uh, uh bombay which is now uh, of Both course uh, yeah a different different name than what it was in those days and and actually the first uh uh performance that i saw happened to be uh, uh a, a sitar performance 
and I was taken, uh, rushed from the theater, uh, rushed from the, from the uh, boat side and uh, got off and went immediately to see uh, a performance of, um, of music in India, which I'd always found fascinating. So, so the whole nine months I was there in India, and I uh, traveled widely around India. I met uh, some of the important figures of the time, um, and had the chance to be associated with the National School of Drama. And as a uh, student, but mostly as a researcher, uh, I gained knowledge of the kinds of performances that existed both in uh, in English language and Indian, various Indian languages. So I was uh, traveled all the way around the country uh, to the major cities, collecting data uh, concerning this subject. Then, of course, in the uh, afterwards, uh, the Rockefeller people approached me and said, we have a grant and we want you to take the money and go to India and study uh, the classical Indian theater, the Sanskrit theater. And so I did, I ended up going to, uh, uh, to various uh, places where Sanskrit plays were performed and talking with a whole lot of people who were uh, involved in the continuation of the study of Sanskrit and Sanskrit language, and especially in the study of theater. So that, that then propelled me into the next stage in which I became obsessed with the Kudiyatam of Kerala. And so since that time uh, in the 1970s, I focused on the Kudiyatam of theater of, um, of um, Kerala and focused on my uh, work of my teacher uh, uh, who was at the Kerala Kalamandalam at the time. Mm -hmm. And so I learned gesture language, facial expressions, uh, uh, because those became interesting to me as a theater director. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we were able to, from the, from the um, research uh, funding, we were able to bring my teacher to, uh, at the time I was teaching on Long Island at uh, Stony Brook, and we brought him there and we did a full-scale production with our students uh, in Sanskrit, Prakrit, and Malayalam. Wow. And, uh, and so this became a, uh, a kind of attempt to broadcast the idea of uh, the, the theater of that area of the world. And still, of course, discovering that it was the oldest surviving theater in uh, civilization. So, and uh, along with the No Theater of Japan uh, has that distinction of being extremely old and preserved from those early days to the present day. Oh, so, that, yeah, so my interest has been very much sort of zeroed in like a camera focusing in on a subject, eventually focusing in on Kudiyatam. Wow. No, that, I mean, that's great because, you know, I have met you many times, but it's good to hear the real story behind the story. <laughs> uh, to, I've seen many of your plays over the last, I would say, six years that I've seen Nati Durpan and many other festivals in New Jersey and New York area. What strikes me most about you is the simplicity. Mm -hmm. You are an amazing director and you are very down to earth in person. And I, I definitely want audience to know that because you have this air about yourself that is so uh, nice and pleasant that you always work with your actors. Uh -huh. I, I have one at home who has worked with you. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> and I've seen her, I've talked to her Oh. And uh, the last Nati Darpan, we saw a miracle. We did see your uh, play, The Priest and Prostitute, which was outstanding. Oh, I thank you. People fell on the floor laughing. <laughs> uh, and at the same time, it was simplistic. So my question to you is, how do you manage to keep that simplicity and still have that essence of the play come out so well? Oh, well, this is quite a question. Thank you for that question. You're most welcome. Uh, I, I, I tend to see every play as a challenge. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I'm sure you, as a director, you understand what that means. Essentially, how to make the play come alive for the audience. 
And, and so uh, at times I felt frustrated because I didn't accomplish what I intended to do. And, uh, and on the other hand, I always learn something from every play I direct. And that, that I meant to say earlier on, that was principally my focus as a student, a, a BFA, MFA in directing mm -hmm. at the University of Oklahoma and a PhD uh, focusing on directing at Michigan State. Wow. So, so directing actually was the, uh, my love was for theater initially. And then I began to fall in love with Indian theater and the art forms in India. And so I think that, uh, that what one, as you know, you work with is to bring forth the energies of the actor to, to address the character that they happen to be portraying. And, uh, and uh, Thornton Wilder, the American director, and, well, an American playwright, famous American playwright from our town, uh, talked about uh, the n importance of the actor to his uh, success as a, a dramatist. And without the actor, there's no, th no theater, there's no drama. Right. We can, as directors, we can go on talking about directing forever, but until we've got the actors supporting the notion of the play, we don't have anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so I try very hard to pull forward the energies of the of the actors and to put them into a um, to conceive of a of a play at, at, with a certain direction, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. The Priest and the Prostitute was a favorite of mine, and I I've, I've worked with this for years, going clear back to Michigan State days. Uh, when we, uh, C.C. Mehta from uh, University of Baroda came to uh, work with us at, um, at uh, Michigan State. And C.C. was a playwright and a, uh, he did a lot of uh, uh, stories about Indian life and culture because his father was on the rail, in the railroads business. And his father traveled all over India and C.C. traveled all over India. And he became very obsessed with letting more people learn something about India. Mm -hmm. But he was also uh, very close to the actors when he was working as a, uh, a writer and a uh, journalist. Uh, I don't know whether you know CC, but he was he was very much in, uh, embodied in the um, uh, work of the Babai Theater in Gujarat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in uh, which he set me up to see all sorts of Babai performances in the villages. And I was uh, struck by the uh, enormity and interest of Babai uh, as an art form. Uh, it's virtually dead in, uh, in um, Gujarat, as far as I can understand. You know, I, I, was, I, was, uh, I, I was very happy to see one of those performances that was done in India, in Mumbai, uh, oh. about a few years ago. But again, oh. that was a simplistic design again. Very simple, yeah. Uh, so that was great. So I, I think uh, what I would like to ask you is, you know, you, you give so much thought to these plays and I've seen you over a period of time. So I really want you to kind of address this for the younger directors like myself and a lot of other directors in these areas who tend to kind of find something quickly and tend to direct it quickly and kind of, because you know everybody wants to do that. But mm -hmm. looking at you over a period of time, I've seen that you kind of sever the process over a period of time. And then when you're ready, then you bring forth a production or something that you've been thinking about. So if you can kind of bri briefly kind of tell um, the directors in the audience, how should one you know, kind of go about it um, so that they kind of learn from you and your experience, what should be people looking at? Well, lose, uh, use your imagination. That's what I, I would tell a director. To continue to use your imagination to bring forth the goods which the, the playwrights have given us. I mean, we're very fortunate to have, uh, over the centuries, we've had all sorts of playwrights. Uh, I, I didn't really dare to do any contemporary Indian productions translated into English for a while. Mm -hmm. So it mostly started because I studied with Ibram Akazi at the National School of Drama. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And I met many of the playwrights, uh, uh, Girish Karnard, especially, and Vijaya Tendulkar, both of whom had an influence over me. And, and I saw their work as something I would like to tackle. But it took time to actually bring that forth. So, so actually, I would say to a young uh, director, uh, to continue to direct the whole idea you like an actor if you don't act continue to act you can't learn the craft and skill of acting right and the same thing holds true with directing and i'm sure you understand that that's the whole whole principle is that you you feel like i that the play has something to say and i can help bring it forth right that's, okay that's, no, that's that's that basically uh brings me to the topic at hand and I've seen your plays over many, many years, as I said before. So this time, and without going into details about the play, because I love this uh, script, obviously, it's Rajiv's script. You have, I'm, I'm very excited to see how you have tackled this uh, very delicate subject. So without giving anything out to the audience, can you kind of briefly tell us, uh, and I'm asking the same question to all the directors is, why would what would you like to say to that to the open 2022 audience what sh why should they come and see this play of ah. yours ah well i rajiv's play is really very uh gripping i think mm -hmm. and and i actually uh, looked at it earlier on without knowing how popular it was in the schools mm -hmm. apparently it's been done widely in the public schools Correct. Uh, throughout the country and so I was amazed at that. And, and uh, for a long time, I've wanted to do one of his plays. I wasn't particularly concerned about which one it was, but uh, the, the story about the playground suddenly struck me as being something that was relevant to today's youth, which is, is how do they survive in a world in which they're constantly being pressed to go away from each other and not towards each other. Uh, and, and so uh, this particular play attracted my attention. And I uh, looked up one day when I was looking at one of my classes and I saw two of the students sitting there and I said, these people have to play this, these roles. Okay. And so I had an audition uh, within the class and I had uh, a good series of, uh, uh, of students who were really very uh, competent to do the show. But I saw them, uh, these particular two that I chose, uh, because I thought that they struck, um, they, were, they struck the right tone for the play. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think that the audience uh, hopefully will find that, uh, that they give forth their understanding. And, and they've gone far beyond what I expected them to do. I mean, they're very young. They're only sophomores in college. Right. So they, they don't have a history. They have a history of working in theater in the high schools, but they don't have a history of working in theater in the way that we're thinking about it. Oh, and, that, that sounds really, really good. Yeah, yeah. so I would say that uh, look look at the way these two performers bring forth the understanding about Rajiv Joseph's play, because I think they do it uh, a great deal of service. Well, that, that, that's, that's phenomenal, Dr. Farley. I think I'm, I'm, I've got goosebumps. I'm very excited <laughs> just thinking about the play with these two sophomores uh, coming and performing on stage. I think the not to the open audience is going to be, they're lucky and they'll be very, very happy to have your production uh, for Not Taylor Point 2022. So I would really like to thank you for coming, spending time with us. Um, I would like to thank Mana TV International and then I'll hand it over to Ashokji again to um, kind of uh, give us the closing remarks. Thank you so much, Manoj. And thank you, Dr. Farley. I'm so excited. After hearing all those things about the play, I'm so excited. And I'm sure, as Manoj said, our audience is lucky to have this particular play in our festival. Looking forward to this festival. Thank you so very much, Dr. Farley, for your time. See you at Point 2022. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, for, thank you so much, Dr. Farley. And thank you, Dr. Manoj Shahane, for such a wonderful interview. My audience is thrilled to see. We are very, very excited 
to uh, see this play in Nat Darpan 2022 on October 15, 2022. I'm really, really thrilled. I hope you like this. Uh, I would like to invite you all for Nat Darpan 2022 on October 15, 2022. See you next week for our next episode of Curtain Riser at Nat Darpan 2022. this episode of Curtain Riser at Nat Point 2022. My name is Ashok Saudhari. I'm a president and founder of Indian Heritage and Cultural Association of New Jersey, a nonprofit organization established in 2013 to promote local talent in performing art and to bring the communities together. Since 2016, we have been organizing Nat Point a multilingual short play festival in New Jersey. The literally meaning of Natyadarpan is the mirror to the society through performing arts. Since 2016, we have been organizing this short play festival where almost 45 to 50 short plays in Marathi, Hindi, English, Gujarati, Bengali, Kannada has been performed here in New Jersey. Over 465 theater artists perform here. The success of Natyadarpan is such that that last four out of five shows has been sold out. And again, the reason why it become more successful in New Jersey is because of the selection of the plays, our selection committee. The second reason is our actors and directors who perform such a fantastic job. And the third is our very talented audience of New Jersey and surrounding. We are happy to inform you that this year also, our sixth Nat Darpan, Nat Darpan 2022, will be scheduled on October 15 at Edison, New Jersey, where we have selected six short plays, two in Marathi, two in Hindi, and two in English. These short plays are very special and sometimes complex. I also want to let you know that five out of six short plays will be premiered this time, first time here in New Jersey. So in order to know a little bit more about these plays, we are inviting the directors of this play. And we are fortunate today to have Ashutosh Hadap, a director of Marathi short play, Alpavira, written by uh, Ifran Mujawar. Welcome, Ashutosh. But before that, I would like to also invite today's host, Dr. Mano Shahane. Dr. Shahane, physician by profession, but theater person by heart. He is an actor, director, playwright, and many more. He is the one of the best choice for hosting these type of episodes. Welcome, Manoj. Welcome, Ashutosh. I would like to welcome uh, Ashutosh Hadap, uh, who is a director for the play Alpaviram. So Ashutosh, uh, and for the viewers, the, me and Ashutosh go way back when. We know each other for a very long time. We have uh, worked together as co-actors, uh, co-directors, as director and actor, and so on and so forth. So this is a very interesting episode for me and a personal one. So welcome Ashutosh to the Curtain Razor 2022 for Nakti Darpan. Thanks Manoj, good to be so, here. So I actually got, I was privileged to see uh, the rehearsal for this play too. So it's very, very nicely done Ashutosh. So let's start um, for the audience perspective at the beginning. First and foremost question I have for you is, how, how did you find this play? Sure. Um, so, so first of all, thank you for the opportunity to to be here. Uh, I appreciate it, Ashok and Manoj. Um, you know, Nakhtadarpa over the years has uh, has established a reputation for encouraging uh, thought provoking um, and intense plays. Right. I think they're always they're always looking for something uh, a little out of the ordinary. 
And so when I decided to put in an entry for Natya Darpan, I was looking for a script that I felt would be appropriate for this uh, forum. So I actually looked at a whole bunch of scripts and then uh, came across this script by Irfan Mujawar. And uh, I, I just felt that it really sort of fit the whole Natya Darpan um, milieu. Uh, it is thought provoking, it is intense, and, and maybe we can talk a little bit more about the script a little bit later. But I just thought it would be a perfect fit um, for Natya Darpan. So once I read this script, I, I was pretty sure that's the script I wanted to uh, go forward oh. with. I, I couldn't agree with you more. This is very uh, well-written script that will appeal to the audiences because it has got a different kind of genre that depicts different kind of relationships. Uh, and it's universal. It's not really uh, depicting one part of the world versus the other. It's pretty much um, universal and accepted pretty much in all different kind of cultures and different milieus, like you said. So. Let me ask you a quick question. For people who don't know you, and I have known you for a while, you have a very rich uh, heritage uh, from Nasik, India. Um, and every time I hear from you, you know, all the stories of your childhood that, you know, you have brushed uh, shoulders with a lot of dignitaries of their times, writers and so on and so forth. Can you please tell me something about that so that, you know, audiences can know where you came from. Sure. So I, as, as you mentioned, I grew up in Nasik and, and both my parents were very active in theater. My mother was a professor of English. My father uh, was a very well-read, uh, articulate uh, uh, person who wrote very well. And, and uh, due to a number of circumstances, they had uh, associations with a lot of um, sort of very well-known writers and, and actors in, in Maharashtra, especially, right? So uh, I mean, it, since I'm from Nasik, Kusumagraj is obviously, you know, a beloved uh, person in Nasik, and, and my, my parents knew him very well. He would come to our house. Uh, Pula Deshpande would stop by. Uh, you, you know, all of these, uh, Ranjit Desai was a very close friend of my father's, and so on and so forth. And so I sort of, uh, uh, Vasan Kanekar would be at our house quite regularly. So I sort of grew up in this environment where, you know, I sort of picked these things up by osmosis. So I remember sort of lying on a bed, uh, as a six-year-old while my parents are chatting with Vasan Kanekar and somehow somewhere that sort of rubs off on you right you don't realize that's what's happening but it sort of does rub off on you so I would really I think credit my parents uh, for my love uh, for theater and, and and the passion that I have for it. No oh, that that I mean uh, just just hearing all those names gives me goose, goosebumps because just to be in the same room in the same vicinity of these dignitaries and all these celebrities from their time and they were really true celebrities, not not the ones of you know this generation. They they have created a huge impact on Indian Marathi literature, and uh, it, it's great to hear that. So so having acted for last fifteen years that I know you because I've been with you for that many years, how how did you kind of bridge that gap finally? What made you decide that? Now, instead of getting awards for all this place that you've gotten awards for depicting young man and old man and so on and so forth that that everybody knows about from your bio, why would you not be in front of the stage and get more accolades for being a great actor? Why, why did you want to make that, you know, great step across the board and jump on the backstage and start going into this direction? Is, is there something that kind of clicked or you said, I have to get into this because I have a different vision? Yeah, so that's, that's a very interesting question, Manoj, right? I mean, this is something, and you know this, this is something I've been thinking about for a while. And I've always felt that I might be able to offer a, 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 a different, a unique uh, point of view because uh, you know me well. And, uh, you know, I've always believed that understatement is really what it's all about, right? And, and so I felt that my uh, sort of how I approach acting is something I might be able to bring to directing and see how that works. And so I've been looking for something to direct for the last couple of years. Uh, you know, being a core member of theatrics like you are, we have some very good um, uh, directors in our mix. You know, you're one and Makran's the other one. And, and obviously Ashok Wanzari was, uh, was a, you know, a, a, a great uh, presence uh, for us. Uh, but I felt that this is something I've always wanted to give a, sh uh, give a shot to uh, see how it feels like to be on the other side of the camera, if you will. 
Uh, and I felt that given my experience as an actor, I might be able to draw upon that um, and, and, and then sort of bring that to my directing uh, and hopefully work with talented actors uh, such as Ani and Sanket here to bring a story to life um, sort of in a different way than, than what I've been used to doing for the last uh, 15 years. Yeah, no, that, I think that's great to hear because I think we need more people like yourself, uh, Dr. Farley and a lot of other folks who are trying to bridge that gap and come up with a different kind of generation of plays, different genres, different ways of presenting them. So I, I really applaud you for coming to the forefront and showcasing this talent this time. So before we get the actors on board, a quick question for you without giving so much to the audiences, because I really want audiences to come and see the play and not give them any snapshot of it or synopsis. What would you tell the Natya Darpan 2022 audiences? Why should they come and watch Alpaviram? Yeah, so like you said uh, a little while ago, Manoj, uh, this really is a universal story, right? It is a very relatable story. I think every single one of us can relate to this story because it's sort of universal in nature. This is something all of us have to confront at one point or other in our lives. So I think I'll leave it at that. But um, having said that, it's also a very personal story. It's a very, very personal story for the two protagonists in the play. And I just kind of like that juxtaposition of the universality of it, as well as how personal it was. And I feel like audiences, after watching this, hopefully if we do our job right, will come away, um, you know, deeply touched, uh, uh, moved, but also with some food for thought. Uh, yeah. And I think at the end of the day, that is really what we all aspire to, right? I think that's what Natya Dirpan is all about. And, and I think, again, given the nature of this topic, I hope that people will come away from it um, sort of having experienced something that touches them. Yeah, no, I, mean, I, I absolutely couldn't agree with you more. Uh, and I, I'm very excited, um, not, not, not to tell people, but I'm gonna do lights for you uh, mm -hmm. for this play. So I'm even more excited than everybody else. And uh, if I could invite uh, Sanket and Ani uh, to come back on uh, video and audio, I have kind of a few questions for both of them. Hi, much. Hi, hi, Ani, and hi, Sanket. Uh, and I saw your rehearsal the other day, and you know, I I, I couldn't agree more uh, with Ashutosh that you guys are perfect for those characters. You know, and I can give to people that you you are brothers in the play without giving up so much. Tell me, I mean, I've seen both of you act in different roles in the past in different plays. Uh, very wide variety of plays. What's your um, take on this one with a, with a new uh, actor turned director? Is, is that easy for you? Or is that something that is more difficult? Or can you give me some few lines for that? Um, I, I, I would probably let my elder brother go first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, thank you. First of all, again, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here and uh, I, this is, uh, it's an honor. It's a pleasure to be working with uh, Ashutosh and Sanket. Uh, the level of detail, the level of um, uh, scrutiny, the level of the different layers of human emotions that Ashutosh introduced us to, it's a whole different level of learning. And uh, I hope, uh, we hope, Sanket and I, uh, you know, to be able to provide our audiences with the immersive journey into that moment uh, that uh, Ashutosh talked about that all of us can relate to the various levels that human humans can, uh, you know, that we all have inside of us uh, to be able to do justice to that. Uh, that in and of itself has been such an educational, informational, sort of really learning experience working with Ashutosh and Sankhi both. So it's been absolutely a fulfilling experience. Uh, you know, as they say, the destination, most more important than the destination is the journey in and of itself. And this these practices itself have been so fulfilling. Thank I can't you. even begin to express. Well, that's, that, sounds, that sounds very exciting. Uh, what about you, Sanket? Uh, I, I would probably just start with uh, obviously saying plus one to literally everything that Ani said. I think these practices have been... Uh, so, so one is understanding the character, right? And uh, understanding the character, what is the character's place in the play? And I think Ashutosh did an amazingly awesome job at it. Just 
knowing what is the mental position that each of them is in why are they doing what they are doing why are they reacting in a in a certain way and all all of those right and then starting to add layers of hey this is the history this is the baggage that this guy is bringing here before uh before he comes to all these uh, all these people in uh, performing here and i i i think all of that was uh, very meticulously done i i and that's what i really loved about working with ashutosh right um I also i think from a process perspective i i learned a lot just in terms of uh, again we we start when we start thinking about uh, putting together a play right uh, my experience has been we start looking at okay this is how my blocking is going to look this is how um this is the character's journey or the arc and all those things right i i think i saw ashutosh going a little bit further than that like for example looking at every visual like from a blocking standpoint looking at a visual almost like a photograph or for instance if you are uh, yes we absolutely get a liberty of adjusting the dialogues to the way we want but then there are certain things and uh, i i can probably see ashutosh smiling there because he's he's a little bit picky on the lyrical value of the words which is <laughs> which is about really interesting yes. <laughs> which is very interesting right and i had not thought about the words in a way that he does but now that i know it that's uh, that's always on my mind now so yes absolutely fantastic experience there no the thank you so much ani and sanket and ashutosh i think you know you're going to hit it out of the park so um i would like to wish um, all of you and, and the entire team uh, all the best for the show uh, i'm sure alkoviram will do great at natyarupa 2022 and in closing i would like to invite ashok uh, choudhury ji again to give us some closing remarks before we end the session thank you manoj and thank you all of you i am so excited now i have not seen the real self so now my curiosity has really peak now i'm i can't wait to see you guys on october 15th at natyadar point 2022 thank you so very much for coming here today for your time and looking forward to see you at natyadar point 2022 and thank for you. those folks uh we will see you again next week for our next episode of curtain riser at natyadar point 2022